You're at the top and I'm underground below you, in the screening station. This is the first stage at our biomechanical wastewater treatment plant. This treatment technique makes use of water's natural self-purifying processes. We just need to help it a bit. That means speeding the process up and making it more efficient. So here you can see the mechanical part, where the screens catch anything solid that's suspended or floating in the water. To be exact, anything over three millimeters in size. Smaller particles will pass through. The stuff we catch is called screenings, plus some grit and sand washed into sewers by the rain, which gets captured in another part of mechanical pre-treatment. The vast majority of the waste we find in the inflowing water shouldn't actually be in sewers at all. But unfortunately, the reality is that people chuck everything you can imagine down drains. Every day, we remove more than three tons of screenings and almost 1.5 tons of grit and sand here at the Central Wastewater Treatment Plant's new water line. But half of all that waste is... Well, look for yourself. A tomato, a pepper, and a tangerine. And in case you were wondering if you didn't happen to find those keys you dropped down the train, well, yes, they're probably here, but nobody wants to go looking for them. Better to just be careful with your keys. Before we get to the biological part of the treatment plant, let me explain why it doesn't smell here. Do you smell anything up there? No, there's no smell down here either. And there's plenty of smelly stuff as you've seen. That's thanks to our modern deodorization technology. Air is sucked out of all the mechanical pretreatment areas and through a filter material filling these huge black tanks. That strips out all the chemical compounds that we perceive as odors. Outside air is pumped into the enclosed spaces to replace the air that's extracted. The air from other areas is cleaned by passing it through biological filters, which you can't see up on the surface either, but you can see some little house-like things dotted around on the green roof. Those are either drawing fresh air in or blowing cleaned air out. Specialized laboratories monitor our air quality, and the results are excellent. Try a subjective sensory test for yourself. Breathe in through your nose. Do you smell any odors? If you do, they're definitely not coming from our plant. So now here we are at the settling tanks. This is still the mechanical part of the process. As the flow of the water slows down in these tanks, even the smaller pollutant particles that got through the screens start settling to the bottom. To enhance this effect, the tanks are fitted with plates called lamellas that slant downwards, but you can't see them. They're underneath that murky water. Pollutant particles slide down the inclined surfaces of these lamellas to the bottom, where they're swept into a sump. This simple principle makes the process many times more efficient than if the same plant didn't have those invisible lamellas installed. What we can see here is the mechanical removal of fat and grease, which there's a lot of in wastewater. Fats have a lower density than water and precipitate up at the surface, so the tanks have skimmers that go round and gather this precipitated grease into a sump. Up to 70% of the solid waste is removed in the mechanical treatment process, both here and by the screens we saw a minute ago. The rest is removed in the biological part. That's where we'll look next. Now we're in the biological part of the treatment process, and here we have the activation tanks. Hidden under their surface is a massive army of billions of bacteria and microorganisms that helps us clean the water. As we all learned at school, bacteria are a natural part of our world. And we use bacteria like these to eliminate dissolved organic pollutants. Because what we call pollution is a source of energy and nutrients for them to grow and multiply. We supply the bacteria with oxygen and they consume the nutrients and convert them into harmless substances like carbon dioxide, nitrogen and water. Sometimes though they can make too much CO2 so we have to go around with breathing equipment and check with a meter just to be on the safe side. But back to the process, we use our bacteria over and over so to keep them working properly we sometimes send them on a wellness retreat to a regeneration tank. 
There, with plenty of oxygen, they get fit again and are ready to return to their mission. Now we're in one of the treatment plant's most impressive parts. Why is that? Well, the space is gigantic, and there's a monumental number of pumps and pipes installed here. That's why we call this place the Temple of Pumps. In more factual terms, this is the machinery that pumps off sludge from the final step of the mechanical treatment, the secondary sedimentation tanks, and sends it to the regeneration tanks. Do you remember? The wellness trip for bacteria. Hello, here I am. At the previous stops, we talked about bacteria, and they're powerful, but not all powerful. Even after biological treatment, substances remain in wastewater that would have a negative impact on the environment. The main one is phosphorus. If there's too much of it, it causes excessive growth of algae and cyanobacteria. For that reason, we reduce its content by precipitating it. At the very end, we then kill off any pathogens that could occasionally be present using ultraviolet radiation. And there ends the journey of wastewater through our treatment plant. In about 20 hours, it has been transformed from a murky soup into clean water that we can return to nature. No, you can't drink it. To do that, we'd have to send it through our drinking water treatment plant first. But many of its water quality parameters are better than the vault of a river flowing beside you. So here's a question for you. Can you guess how much water there is under the treatment plant's green roof at any one time? A heck of a lot. All of the huge pools of the Podony Swimming Stadium combined could be poured into the treatment plant almost 35 times over. And now we're really at the end of our journey, by the vault of a river where we send off the clean water. Why do we actually do all this? Because wastewater treatment is highly important, and today it's an absolutely essential part of caring for the environment and our human health that depends on it. That's why wastewater is constantly checked by laboratories and why so much care is taken in its treatment. We only have a limited amount of water on this planet and we only borrow it from nature. So we must return it in good condition, not just for ourselves, but also for the generations that come after us.